So in this video, I'm going to be talking about HTML, hypertext, let me change the color of that, hypertext markup language. So HTML. So when you go onto a web browser and you're looking at web pages, what's making those pages look the way they look is code. And the root of that code is HTML. If you were to go into your browser and ask it to show you the source, which all of them do, you'll see a bunch of code there. I'm going to explain the very basics of HTML. Before I do that, I need to explain how the uh, system works. What I mean by that is if this is you on your computer, and you're surfing the internet and you have your web browser and you tell it to go to a particular web page, uh, maybe adobe.com or any other one, it's not going to go directly to those pages. What it's first going to do is go to some other computer. It's actually a server that's connected to the internet and it's called a D N S a domain name server. Think of it this way. If you were to call somebody in the old days, when you wanted to call them up and you didn't know their number, you'd look in a phone book. So you knew their name, but you didn't know their phone number. This is sort of the same idea that you are telling it to go to a website. And in doing that, you need to know the exact address, not a phone number in this case, but address of that website. So that's what the DNS uh, server does. It knows all the addresses of the websites. So you're putting in a request for a particular website that's going to the DNS server. It looks up the address of that website and sends it back to you. Now that you know the address, you can then go to the web server that contains that web site. So someplace there is this server that contains all the web pages to the website that you want to see. So you put in the URL, it goes to the domain, domain name server, gives you the address, it uses that address and goes to the appropriate server that contains those web pages. So that's how it works. So you're not initially going directly to the web server. All right, so let's take a look then at the basics of HTML. Go ahead and get rid of this. All right, so the first thing you have to understand is that with HTML, things are made up of elements. So what I mean is that there are these parts of code that are going to give it instructions as to what to do. Every element begins and ends with a particular tag, an opening and closing tag. For example, there is one called HTML. So it gets placed in between these symbols, these characters, look like the greater than and less than symbol, and every tag will actually have a complementary tag, an opening tag and a closing tag. So it will look very similar except there will be a slash in front of that or near the beginning of that tag. So this one will say slash HTML. So whatever instructions are related to this HTML element goes in between here. Another one, there are things that control the way paragraphs look. So there's the P tag or paragraph tag. And we have an opening one and we have a closing one. There are ones that control headings. So we might have an H2, a heading 2 tag, an opening one and a, oops, I forgot to slash here 
closing tag. So you must make certain that you always have an opening and closing tag. Let's take a look at the basic structure of a web page. So the different parts of the HTML page. You are within an HTML page going to have a couple distinct parts. The first part is the head. This contains information about the web page. It contains information that is going to be needed maybe to control the way things look. And we'll get into a little bit of that when we talk about CSS and styles. The other part is the body. So the head is first. It's on top of the body. The body controls the look of the page. It is going to contain the elements <clears throat> that influence what is on that page and how it looks. Let's look at that a little bit more closely. So with an HTML page, we're always going to have an opening tag that's HTML and we'll have a closing HTML tag. All of the stuff associated with the page has to be in between that opening and closing tag. So we have this HTML element. The head is placed between the opening head tag and the closing head tag. And lo and behold, the body is placed between the opening and closing body tags. Now if you notice I've indented in. Uh, in many programming languages you use this horizontal and vertical white space as it's called to help make things more logical, to make things more easily visibly separated. So I'm by indenting I'm showing that these segments, these parts are inside of my HTML. I technically could run everything on one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, but that's going to be very hard to decode and debug. So this is the way that we want to approach it. Now let's look at some other tags, some of the tags that might go into the head, some of the ones that would go into the body. So we're going to look at some other elements and their associated tags. I already mentioned that there are ones for the headings. We have headings that go from an H1 all the way to an H6. And an H1 heading is the biggest. And the H6 is the smallest. So we would have tags for headings that might be something like an H1. And what we would put in between is what we want for the heading. So maybe we have a heading that we want to read, my story. I need to end that with the closing H1 tag. That would be the biggest heading available. Now you could technically make text bigger than an H1, but by using the headings, H1 will be the biggest. So we have headings. And again, you could make this an H2 if you wanted smaller, H3 if you wanted smaller than that. So you have a choice of H1 to H6, but always opening tag, the information relevant to that tag, and then the closing tag. Another one that we could use is the paragraph tag. So that would be the P tag. And we must make sure that we close it with the P tag. And what goes in there is any text that you want. And that'll be treated like a paragraph. We can also put in, and, and these typically are going to go into 
the body because these are things associated with what we will see. A heading will create a heading. A P tag will create text in the form of a paragraph that we can see on the page. So these are some of the kinds of tags that you would see within the body. Another one that you would possibly see would be one for including an image on your page. So let's take a look at that one. So that is going to then have the IMG tag. And this one's a little bit different. It doesn't immediately close. There's some additional information that we need to provide you have to tell it where that picture is coming from. You have to tell it the source. So you'll say SRC equals, and then inside of double quotes, you need to give it the location of that file. The simplest thing you can do is make sure that the picture is in the same location as your web page. If it is not, then you have to take some extra special care in making sure that you give it the right path. For right now, I'm going to assume that this is correct, that in my relative location is with my photo in the same place as my HTML. We oftentimes will include some other information in here. So we would have the alt. Alt is the information that would be used for things like screen readers. People who have vision problems would use software on their computer to read the page. The problem is, and it's no problem for the text that's on the page, but what about the graphical elements, the visual elements, the purely visual elements like a picture? They can't see the picture, so how are they going to know what the picture is? The alt text, you want to include in there then something that is descriptive of that picture. So maybe this picture is one of a dog. And we could put more than one word in there, but I'm going to put dog. Another element we oftentimes put in here is one called title. And this is for when you hover your mouse over the picture, a little window pops up, a little tooltip pops up with whatever text you want. In this case, again, I'm going to put dog. Now, continuing on with that, we could actually put some additional information if we wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and this is now going to be closed. Now, note that it's just going to be a slash and my closing. So note that there's not like a separate opening and closing tag here. This one's done a little bit differently. And I'll show you this in another video. I'll actually open up a program we're going to be putting in the actual code and showing you the corresponding web page that it creates. All right, so let's then take a look at how we can create a link. So if we want a web page to go to a particular um, other page on our website, we need to tell it that. So again, that would be part of something that would be in our body. So the way that's normally done is using the A tag. And then you would simply put your href and make that equal to whatever the name of the HTML pages. Now once again the best, I will not say the, always the best, but the simplest way to do it is make sure everything's in the same folder, the same location. I'm going to assume that here. So I'm going to call mine then about dot html. So whatever the name of the web page is, again it would need to be stored in the same location as the page, I would simply make it about dot html. I then need to close that. Now notice that's like the opening tag. I can then put some text. I can say something like click here. And then I would have my closing tag slash a and then close that. 
this click here, whatever text I put, this becomes then a hyperlink to this about.html. All right, so these are things that can control the way our thing, our web page looks when we open it up in our browser. All right, let's take a look at some other things. One of the things we want to try to do is make things as consistent as possible. And one way to do that is by using what's called styles. And I'm just simply going to get into the very basics of styles here. The idea of styles is that we can define the way things need to look and do that in one location. And that will affect everything on that page. In fact, getting a little bit more into this later on, you'll see that we can do it one place and it can affect all of our pages on our website. For now, we're going to affect just a single page. So these kinds of things go into the head of our web page, not into the body. They'll affect things that are in the body, but the actual tags go into the head. So we would need to use the tag style and we have to tell what type and CSS simply stands for cascading style sheets meaning that we make one change one place it cascades and affects everything related to it we would and again this would be in the head so we would have our opening head and closing head tag I'm not going to include those right here but then we would have to make sure that we have a closing style tag. Then whatever styles we have would be in between here. For example, I might want all of my H1, all of my headings that are H1, to be of a particular color, all the same color. So I have H1, I have this left curly brace, and then I'm going to put color colon black. I need to end it with a semicolon. So this is a colon. The last one on the line is a semicolon. And I need, whenever I have an open curly brace, I need a closing curly brace. So I'm going to put mine right here. Now I could have more things. Maybe I want to define some other properties associated with H1. I could do that and do it right in between these two curly braces. I'm just going to have the one. Let's say, for example, I want my paragraphs to have a certain look, all the paragraphs on this page. So I give it the tag, in this case the P, I put my opening curly brace, maybe I put a particular font size that I want all of them to be. So it's font dash size colon, then I got to give it the value associated with that. So, and this can be specified in different kinds of ways, and we'll talk about that later, but I'm going to make it 1.9M. Maybe I want them to have a certain color. So I have to give it the uh, object that I'm going to refer to, and I have to define its properties. So maybe this one's going to be white. Yeah. I forgot the semicolon up here. So notice I give it the property colon, give it the value, semicolon. Property colon, value, semicolon. So we can control for every one of our tags that are in our body, we can control the style, the properties associated with those. Let me mention a couple others. There is a, as you're aware, a body section of this, we can actually define properties associated with the body. So let me go ahead and grab my eraser here because I need to move my style tag down. I'm going to just leave it out for now so I have room. But maybe I want to define some things associated with the body. So 
well, since we know the tag has in it body, I need to say body. I need to have my opening curly brace. And then whatever properties are associated with the body I want to control, I got to put those and give them a value. For example, maybe there's a background color that I want to use other than the default. So it'd be background dash color. That's the property colon. And maybe I want to specify in hex. So pound eight F B C eight F semicolon. If you go onto Adobe site and look for cooler, K-U-L-E-R, they will give you a color wheel. I have a link to it on my uh, D2L page. You can look for it there. It will generate, based on the color that you're seeing, the hex code associated with that. So you can oftentimes specify it by using these word-based colors, black, orange, red, yellow, green kinds of things, but not everything. Maybe you don't want to exit that particular green and you want something a little bit different, then you're going to have to specify it using that because there are millions of colors that are available and just using the words, you're not going to have millions of different words to describe all those colors. Maybe we want all of the font to be of a particular kind. So I can say font family and maybe I want my fonts to first try to use Arial, but if for some reason that's not installed on the machine, I'm going to tell it to go ahead and use Verdana. Maybe I want my margins around the edges to be of a particular size. So I can say margin colon, maybe I want 30 pixels. So I can put all different kinds of properties in here. Now I need to make sure that I close that particular style. So I've got the um, body opening, closing tag, the properties and their values in between. Remember that this is going to go in the head section. So we would have that opening head tag in here. We would need to as well have the um, closing style tag. And again, I don't have room for that. And we have to have the closing head tag in there as well. All right. So that's it for the basics of HTML. The basics are simply using these different elements to make the page contain the look that you want, the information that you want. If you want to go ahead and take a look at the other video that actually goes through and gives you some examples. Thank you.